Um, those of you who saw Mehdi's talk a bit from a DPL will have seen the slides where he mentioned um, what the motivation roadmaps can be. So, uh, and also um, trying to find some ways to actually get that growing started. So this is what this buff is about. Um, I have two mics. You can pass them around and I'll, I'll one for passing around and one I'll <coughs> run around with. Uh, so if you have a question or something to say, just be sure to raise your hand so that we can get your question on video as well. Thanks. Hi. Uh, everyone in the room saw the slides about the roadmap or not? If you didn't, raise your hand. Okay, so I'm going to show them um, quickly because we are a bit out of time. Um, this is a mail, whatever. So it's, uh, let's go to the end, yeah. Um, so it was about to um, work on a document uh, with the goals that we set for the project, uh, have a green decision process on how to get things on the roadmap and what's part of the roadmap and uh, what's not part of the roadmap. Um, it's uh, similar that to what we used to have uh, the release goals, uh, but they were bound to release and only cover the technical um, uh, aspect of the project. Uh, in the roadmap, we could have ideas about the infrastructure, about the documentation, about the organization, about uh, how to spend money, how, whatever. So it's not only technical aspects about packaging or getting stuff done in the archive. Um, so what I so there is a roadmap uh, document in Gobi. Yeah, some people pr found it. Uh, I've put something, uh, some items on the agenda. Um, so we are going to discuss first the... Um, so nobody has a responsibility today on the roadmap. So at some point, there is a delegation that should be done uh, so that the team in charge of that will be able to and have the legitimacy to decide on the content of the roadmap. And for that, I put uh, some ideas about the tasks of that uh, team. Uh, then um, discuss which team should be in charge of that. Uh, is it an existing team? Uh, will be a new, uh, should we create a new team to take care of that? And then uh, get some ideas from the the content, the actual content of the roadmap. Uh, I shamelessly took what uh, was for the release goals. So it's quite about it was about smart. It was about finding an advocate for the idea uh, to make sure works is getting done. Uh, it's not useful to have something if if there is no one pushing to get things implemented. And it was about having an idea which is generally with, with where there is generally consensus. Uh, otherwise, um, we are not, we will not asking the team to decide blindly on the things. There should be debate among developers and uh, until they reach a consensus. And if not, the technical committee could decide uh, which side to take or which solution to implement because that's their role today. Uh, so first one, tasks. So for me, it was about getting the proposals, reviewing them, ensuring that there is some coherency uh, to not have conflicting ideas or ideas that overlap. Uh, it was about deciding about the content of the roadmap. So after the review, they make a proposal for the project. It, get, it gets published. And, um, well, yeah, that's all. Uh, having periodical reviews, because at some point, maybe some ideas are not relevant anymore, so you can uh, drop them from the roadmap or get 
few things added. And measurement of the results was added by Pabs, maybe. So for me, it was uh, the status. Get or the progress, so maybe we should add it there. It's part of the review. If you review something, you have to measure its progress. So Luca has something to yeah, say. Like yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's a buff. Uh, so we have two different uh, reactions or questions. Hmm? So the first one. Yeah. Uh, no, that's the first one. Are you sure? Which one? Which one? It's supposed to be, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, I have two different uh, comments or questions. The first one is, what's the positioning of this compared to DEP, the announcement proposals? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can answer this one and I can answer the other one after. Uh, so for me, the DEP is uh, uh, how to say, a tool to get things uh, documented and implemented. Uh, it could be the same process, but there is no one, uh, how to say, uh, I mean, managing all the depths and getting, making sure that uh, there are still active advocates, that they are still uh, making progress if they need something or not. Uh, depths is, uh, could, uh, can also be seen as uh, um, focused on the technical side, which is not the, the whole point. And also, uh, it's not convenient to show what are the current things. So we could have another document somewhere on the wiki, for example, to say this is the roadmap for 2016, uh, maybe with links to DEPS. But yeah, DEPS could be a, a way to implement the roadmap. I discussed yesterday a bit uh, with Sam about uh, DEPS as well. So basically, depths are maybe too descriptive. Roadmap is a bit higher level. Maybe depths are a tool to detail how we implement something in the roadmap and try to build consensus. And sometimes it can be also the other way around. We, we build a depth, but uh, it's not clear if we have some consensus. So at that point, it might make sense to get back to the technical committee to sort of see whether it's good enough or not, and uh, if mm. it can be uh, blessed some way. And, and in that case, maybe it can be included in the roadmap or not. It depends on the level of the depth. Mm. So for the release goals, we used to have a wiki page. I can show you an example. Uh, uh, so goals. So it's all on the wiki, and for example, if we take something that I know it was um, documented. So you have a description, and then the implementation details. Um, you have advocates, uh, some contact point, if there is one. Uh, same status of the work that has been done. Uh, usually you can also uh, find a link to the BTS with the user tags. Uh, if people uh, filed bugs and tagged them properly, uh, so you can see the progress of the of the goal. Uh, what about the, yeah? That's about it. So it could be as simple as that, but not necessarily different. Are uh, people do have um, comments about this part or the tasks or yes. not? Uh, yeah, so I'm all for uh, more communication about how we want, or people want to improve Debian uh, and more documentation about that. Uh, I see the point in having a team in charge of uh, ensuring that the process stays uh, alive and that uh, deals with the infrastructure to measure progress, etc. Uh, I'm not so sure about the um, fact that that team needs to be delegated. It seems more to me like it seems similar to me to policy team, for example, where people are just helping document the state of things rather than decide on the content of uh, what should go well. That's up to the technical committee. I mean, that's the difference between policy and technical committee. 
And uh, so the one thing that is, that the one power that could be delegated is uh, decide the content of the roadmap, but that's uh, recursive power, like you, d you decide there's a roadmap and then you, decide, you delegate the power to decide what's in it. And I wonder if um, we shouldn't think of, first of what are the uh, higher priority, the, the, well, the powers that it gives to, to be on the roadmap and then decide if it should be a delegated team. Like if all roadmap, that's what you wrote at line 10, if all roadmap bugs are uh, RCs, then we need a delegation, but it overlaps with the release team or... Right, so my proposal for this could be that the team is in charge of like the paperwork, but the actual decision of what's in their roadmap is taken by all the developers through voting. So people propose goals, they get seconds for their goals, and then eventually we vote which of those goals we want and which goals we don't want. So and who votes? What? Who votes, actually? All the developers? Yeah, all the developers. So the same process as a GR? For like a GR for the goals, and whichever goal is on top of further discussion, it gets accepted, and whatever is below further discussion doesn't get accepted. Okay. Wow. I'm usually not convinced. I mean, it's going to work like that. Okay, it's well, uh, that was my idea. Yeah. I mean, it's a way to, uh, to see if people are agreeing with the idea, if there is some consensus. But I think we also can also discuss that on mailing this and see if uh, there is a strong disagreement. Um, I'm not sure there is a, uh, a need, a real need to make votes on it. I mean, for the release goals, for example, in the past, we didn't uh, need to do votes. And there wasn't big fights about what's a release goal and what's not. Uh, so I don't expect it to be much different from what release goals used to be. There's, there's a couple of uh, release goals out there that uh, we have not implemented yet, and they've been like sure. there for 10 years, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the problems, I think, with this approach that we've had was that, uh, you know, sort of define a goal with a deadline and uh, then find out that volunteers are probably just not going to be able to deliver in time. And then, uh, and then we had to sort of like be flexible about how we interpret the re release goal. If we had DEPs with owners or however you call that stuff, um, people responsible for driving the pro progress until um, it, it gets to a point where the technical committee or um, the Debian project at large is, is ready to say, yes, this is, we, we will roll with this. We will take it and put it into the next release. Then maybe the motivation for um, the team leaders or, or these little task leaders, DP owners, um, would be higher to actually drive consensus within the um, sub-project, within the DEP, um, so that they, they then meet the deadline, you know? It's not, uh, the difference is, let's not declare a release goal in the beginning of the process and then fail to meet it. Let's uh, make it clear that whoever, whichever team around the DEP manages to have something ready by the time that we need to freeze um, is going to be included and have it be more of a rolling process. I hope that's clear. Mm. Uh, Ashish has something to say. I think what you're saying is we shouldn't commit to things before they're ready. And if that's true, then it prevents us from being able to use a tentative commitment to drive motivation to succeed at that commitment. And that's actually a, like some, if we were all voting on them, uh, then I, I, I'm sure there are release goals that I could have helped with that I didn't know about. But if I were confronted with them to vote on them, then I would have known about them and I would, would have been more likely to help with them. And I'm not saying voting necessarily is the only way to do that, but I like the, I like some important publicity phase before something is done or not. Sam Hartman, um, I think I'm all for um, a publicity phase where people are trying to get support for, for cool goals. Um, and I think having process behind that, well, having ways of doing that would be great, but I think that should be well before the commitment phase. One of the lessons that was kind of hard for me to learn um, that, that Anthony Towns was, was very good at beating into people. Uh, when I first joined Debian, um, 
you know, over half its lifetime ago, was that the, the people who do the work kind of do get to decide what work gets done. If you don't, that basically Debian is about, a pro, is about enabling people to do work. It's not about mandating what work they will do. Uh, and that's pretty early in our constitution. And I get really worried about um, committing to things before they're ready because that sounds a lot like telling people what work they're supposed to be doing. Um, and I, I think Keith Packard was basically talking about these goal, this goal setting as a way to enable people to do work and to coordinate. Um, but it shouldn't be a stick to hit people with, um, either to discourage them from doing work. That is to say, we shouldn't have anti-goals. And it shouldn't be a way to force people into doing what you want them to do, because both of those things don't work very well in Debian. Yeah, I have two uh, remarks about that. Uh, so indeed, it's not a way to discourage individual initiatives. It was actually part of the, my slides. The only thing I find interesting, uh, important actually, for the team that will be in charge is that, uh, so sometimes you can have two proposals which are conflicting, and we, we have to make sure that uh, all the items are coherent in the way we are going to make things in Debian. And um, so for now, there is the technical committee who, I mean, who handles the conflicts. So we can say we have a process to have that. For the commitment, uh, time commitment, it's actually not very important to say when it will be. We can say when it's ready, like for the releases. Um, what I see for the roadmap is it's a way to promote someone's work. And by promoting it, hopefully you can get more volunteers to get it done. Uh, and that's the most important part, is make them more visible in what they do in the project. It, does that mean you, you're suggesting it should only be goals where someone is already taking charge of the work though? Or do you think we can also have a roadmap item where no one's doing it at the moment? So release goals with inactive advocates in the past didn't work pretty yeah, that's well. We, we can have some section with this, something, this is something that should be done. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then yeah, try to find volunteers to do the work. So. But it should be advertised that, uh, as not active I'm not sure how much it would be effective, but yeah. I, I think very, very strongly that we shouldn't have uh, goals that people haven't signed up to do work on, because then it becomes a wish list. And yeah. I mean, we might have very good ideas or very bad ideas, but it's, um, we need some people to actually do the work, and we can't, and we don't want to force people to do work. So. Sure. Sure. If we want a wish list, I we think can at certainly some point have that, have to but make that's some a different balance. thing. If we don't promote some ideas, they, should, they won't be done in any time in the future, maybe. And we, couldn't, we could say that, uh, for example, I mean, uh, ideas with no advocates could be part of the roadmap for six months, for example, or for one year. And if there is still no activity there, we could drop them. But at least we try to m promote the idea and uh, gather our volunteers for it. I, I think that should be a different, uh, different list, basically. I don't think that we should uh, have ideas that... Well, yeah, as I said, it could be yeah. section, another section in, yeah. the, in the document. If you're looking for something to do, here's a suggested list. That's fine. But it's not, it doesn't necessarily enable people to do the things we want to enable by, by giving them kind of uh, the mandate, which I think a release goal or, or an item on a roadmap implies. Well, I mean, it can also become a kind of precursor stage that if you think something is amazing and should be on the roadmap, then it's your responsibility to gather some people who do have the knowledge to do that work. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a matter of timing. And then the roadmap team's role can be to make sure that you're thinking carefully about who you should be collaborating with in case you're forgetting people. I think that's the part that I find most exciting, that there's some, that there, is a, there, there could be a team that if I sort of say, hey, I think that, uh, I don't know, I think that all of our foos should bar, 
then they say, oh, that's great. Make sure you talk to this person who also does a foo. And I, then I make sure that I'm collaborating with the right people early on. So I'd like to second that idea. I think one of the most important things that a, a team can do here is to avoid late conflict. So it really is incredibly frustrating when you have some great idea and you, 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 you're moving forward and there's a lot of momentum and you've talked to nine of the ten teams you were supposed to and team number ten is like, no, not in a million years. I will never do that. Um, and instead, it's, it's great to get them involved, to, to have some people who help you get them involved early enough in the process. Um, and basically, once you have enough advocates and stuff to be able to answer questions like, so if we were going to make Debian a better operating system for containerized software, how would we go about it? Would this be a reasonable way? Rather than getting 90% of the way done and understand, and then discovering, oh no, someone who's in the critical path won't, won't support it. And I understand that sometimes the answer is, well, we don't know. You, you can only answer this, would this be a reasonable way? Not necessarily, is this the way we would choose? Because we don't normally, you know, we normally let multiple op options flourish in, in parallel for a certain phase. But um, at least le learning the people who are going to be hard sells early can really avoid stop energy being injected. Yeah. I was just looking if there are questions on IRC. Yeah. If someone can monitor that and tell us, it would be great. Um, so I guess we kind of agree on the idea of the tasks. Uh, there is no disagreement, I mean, about it. Uh, so for the RISM uh, goals, we used to raise automatically the severity to important. Uh, that allowed in the past people to make uh, to ease any muse, so it doesn't conflict with the real team's perimeter because it's, the, it's about arsiness or not. And um, the question is, should we keeping it that or not? Should we keep it or not? I guess the only the question is also on how this works in practice. I mean, if we say we, it doesn't necessarily make sense to. Um, remove lots of packages because they haven't yet got a new feature that is in the roadmap. Well, I, I don't know what other people think, but I mean, it, if 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 it's if it's not contradict, there's a question of there could be bugs that are are request but wish list basically, mm -hmm. um, but that removing the package won't actually further the goal. So removing the package because uh, yeah. Um, I'm personally not for it, but for, you're for which? For, for removing packages because the bug wasn't. But imagine our roadmap feature is um, everything must be able to communicate by carrier pigeon, and we haven't yet implemented this in LibreOffice. It doesn't, to me, make sense to remove LibreOffice because there's a wish list bug asking for it. The, the severity is important. It's not release really critical, so yeah. uh, it, does, it will not get removed. Well, and, and still stays the release team jurisdiction to decide what to actually release. And if we have a release goal that says we want CD1 to be entirely reproducible, um, it's, really it's their call to wait or not wait until this wishful thingy we might want to achieve at the end of the day is achieved or not. So I'd, I'd, I'd consider the... the Severity, bug severity, quite of a, de a detail of this discussion, really. Uh, well, not, not really, actually, because uh, in the past it was really helping people during, I mean, during the release goals to make things that uh, easily done in the archive. So, yeah, maybe. So Nils has. Uh, just, yeah, uh, about that. Um, well, I. I more of a, a detail, but what I would like to see is a more ex extensive list of uh, uh, higher, well, higher powers that being on a, in a, being a real goal gives. For example, one thing that could be uh, done is get um, FTP masters to prioritize new processing for packages related to a release goal. 
Uh, that does not need to be done for each and every release goal, but for some of them it could be really relevant to to, to have faster new processing, and yeah. that's a way to provide sure. an incentive for uh, setting up a release goal. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, again, I'm not really convinced that the important wish listing either makes sense because these days the NMU policy is fairly liberal. You can just NMU things with 15, 10 days delay, which is generally enough for almost everything. Okay. So for me, the the main deciding feature is whether or not it's RC or not, and it's going to be staying in non-RC, so it's not really a big deal for me at least. No, I am. Okay. At least we asked the question. <laughs> um, not yet. Okay. Well, that's okay. Uh, no, sorry? Yeah, until he finishes the sentence. So he, yeah, everyone has access to Gobi. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so now the question is, which team could, should uh, get this organized? My idea for now was the technical committee, uh, because in the constitution, uh, so the membership is limited in time, so they had to renew the, uh, the team mem uh, members. Uh, so you don't have people taking away the roadmap for a specific set of developers with uh, some view. It gets renewed and ensures that it's, uh, it remains neutral. Um, it's actually also the body in, uh, in Debian to um, resolve conflicts between developers and offers advice. So for me, it's the best candidate for now. And I'm not for uh, creating new teams because I think we have too many already. Uh, are there some comments on it? What's the position of the te technical committee? Well, technically the technical committee hasn't taken any decision on that so I cannot say what the technical committee opinion is. What I can say is my own opinion is that I can see the value of having the TC being that body. The only thing I worry about is having the other appeal court that the TC is for the rest of the problems. Um, that said, that kind of everything looks like it could be done by another, any other team or f motivated members that would be setting up tools and having a nice process for that. It's just wishful thinking that we can find people to do that. Or I'd be thrilled to discover that it is not. So the technical committee could be the fallback, but I don't think it's a good fallback. I had kind of the same opinion about having the TC being the Debian policy maintainers. That's more of a last resort idea. And if we don't find anyone else to do that job, then the TC might be the one to do it. But it would be a better place if it were not the case. So. Um, about the policy, because it was the last point. Uh, so in the constitution, you already decide on technical policy, so you don't have to maintain the package. I mean, technically, but you could decide whether there was some disagreement on some points. So um, it's not about getting technical work done on the on the package, I guess. Um, for the roadmap, it's not really a fallback. Um, I mean, it's really the first one when you have conflicting ideas and when you have to um, get some, some compromise or consensus or some solution decided or whatever. If you have another team which, is ha which handles that, they still have to uh, go, see on the, go to the technical committee to get it resolved in some way. So uh, having the technical committee in charge of the roadmap is also a way to get the process faster. 
Well, then maybe we disagree on the on on how the actual process of the roadmap would look like. And you're, what I understand from what you're saying is that you assume that there would be a lot of arbitration, which I think might not be the case. Most of the things we can put on the roadmap are ninety eight percent of the time non conflicting. Yeah. Well, sorry. Yeah, if it's true that most of the roadmap items are non-conflicting, which is what I was going to say also, then it seems that the purpose of the uh, roadmap team would be to serve as, like, to be, to provide motivation or to provide, like, to help people think through their ideas. But it, then it, the roadmap team, in my view, a different vision of the roadmap team, if you assume for now, hypothetically, there are zero conflicts, is the let me help you do what you want team, where uh, you, you, you know, if I come up, go to the let me do what I want team, and I say, hey, I really want to change permissions on Varmail, and uh, uh, sure, we can eventually... I'll have to make a patch to policy or whatever and get the tech committee to agree, but I first need to figure out who in the project actually cares about the permissions of our mail. Uh, then the let me help you do what I want team will say, okay, so you need to talk to these IMAPD maintainers and postfix maintainer and exim maintainer and even the sendmail maintainer. I'll be like, right, thanks, I forgot about sendmail. And that is a success of the let me help you do what I want team. Uh, uh. Uh, and so I think that t hopefully... And, and so if you have people on the tech committee who sort of signed up to help arbitrate, then that is sort of an anti-negative perspective. That is like, how do I help this suck the least? And that mindset is a very different mindset from the mindset of how do I explore the whole list of everything going on in Debian to hand you more work to do, to have people to contact, and I'm not responsible, I'm just helping you figure out what you need to do. So in that sense, I think that there's different reasons to get involved in one or the other. Yeah, I was actually trying to say, to see the technical committee with new positive tasks instead of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think but someone. If they, was, if they don't want that, it's. I mean. I, I, I think they I just pushed it. someone into the technical committee on the promise of it being a, a job where you had to have a responsiveness of one week and about an hour a week, whereas this might be a rather um, higher work. Uh, Sam. Uh, so. Um, I think it's very important that our, I would like to see the technical committee perceived, perceived and move towards a, a mode where we are moving things forward in a positive rather than, way than rather than an anti-negative way. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that the technical committee can do some of the do what uh, do help me find the right people to talk to work. We, we, we probably have good skills in that regard, but I do think that ultimately, you're going to have to do a fair amount of work up front of getting substantial energy behind your goal before you can claim any large project resource for review um, just to make workloads manageable. OK. Um, the most important question, actually, um, about the team is, are there some volunteers? for the let me help you to do what you want, team. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the second problem, actually. Um, I mean, I would volunteer as long as there are many other people involved. So maybe let me put it this way. Yeah, like, if you're willing to possibly volunteer for that, raise your hand. This is not a commitment. Just curious if anyone else finds that idea interesting. <laughs> Okay, let me just okay. wow. get the names. Yeah, take, yeah, 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 really, really. Keep your hands up and let him take the name. I'm not kidding. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just he's writing down some names. You're not no, signing up for anything. I mean, so that we can no, discuss with people without, about their commitment to get that done. And it's very important to not... Uh, What's the qualification? Sorry? What's the qualification to be on the team was the question. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be very technical. Uh, it should cover all what we do in Debian, so in that way it's very important to have a diverse team, not uh, focused on the technical aspects, so everyone is welcome. Even non-uploading DDs, even uh, DMs, even non-DDs. Uh, so yeah, if you want to volunteer, 
John Sullivan had his hand up too, just so you have that on the list. Any, any time. Uh, just who is the realist? Okay. Hi. Your name is Kate, right? As, as unfortunate as it might sound for your grand plans, this kind of looks like the project that we should have some sort of attempt out there and then iterate. And trying to get the whole road across the whole thing and going directly saying the technical committee is in charge of arbitrating between the project and having a very complex process about that seems like too early for that. And if we have a team of some people that are ready to announce a quick, quicky, quicky thingy that we have on the wiki saying these are the, the, the constraints we want to have for roadmap items and we start with that. And then if, if in six months we have a dozen of them, then someone will come up with some system to make that more manageable. And if in six months we have nothing, then... So I, mean, I think... What's, what's your point exactly? Uh, my point exactly I mean, is that... Lost. <laughs> I think it just needs to be tried. That's and what we are here, right? I mean, <laughs> and okay. The second half of my point is that it just needs to be tried with a team of people that happen to be motivated, and then we can rediscuss what That's exactly they are. <laughs> so how are we going to do it? Oh, uh, we could start by creating creating a mailing list and start discussing how to make things. Uh, how how to I mean making a call for proposals, for example, get things reviewed on some wiki page, and then make some announcement this. Uh, First set of proposals, and yeah, I don't imagine something complicated. I mean, really. My problem with this team so far, or uh, well, uh, who's going to decide is this really sane? Because uh, if we're only here to the go, okay, you have a nice idea. Uh, why not? I don't understand what your idea is, but it looks good. Uh, <laughs> does it really make sense? Does it make sense if we have to so decide on the proposal and have it be iterated and then? Yes, the, the good thing uh, I like about the technical committee is that uh, it's a technical body, so if they sign up for something, uh, you have few chances of appeal within Debian, so uh, you, you're rather sure that you can go forward uh, without having other people coming. Yeah, so, so the, there are two points. If there is a rough consensus of the, on the idea, there should be, shouldn't be any need to go to the technical committee to decide on, on it. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, and then, uh, well, as uh, Didier commented, um, I have my, how do you say it? Mm -hmm. uh, I have the feeling that they see themselves as a court to decide on problems. Uh, which, so it what? doesn't match the well, mindset for the roadmap. Maybe uh, the, the, the idea is that well, we drive them towards other people in Debian that could be interested, and then we invite them to present their results to in Debian Devil, give two weeks for comments, and uh, well, if there are no objections, then we validate. Otherwise, we maybe seek some uh, advice from the technical committee or. Yeah, like every developers, I mean, they can still have make comments. So I don't think it's necessarily to bind the process to some team and wait for their comments well, specifically I mean, or if something. The, if if, if there is someone some is motivated by, by a project and he has a few negative reactions, uh, he somewhat uh, he wonders: Should I go ahead? Should I not go ahead? I think it's still good. Uh, I think they did not understand my point, or uh, maybe uh, some other bad words. But uh, maybe they cannot. Well, uh, you can have people against for various reasons, and it, sometimes it's a good reason to stop, but sometimes it's not a good reason to stop. Yeah, sure. But so as Moray said, I think earlier, uh, I think we have no not much conflicts on the release goals, and so uh, if there is some conflict, we could we could say, okay, it's not part of this roadmap of this year, but uh, the decision will be delayed for this specific point. And then we publish well, the list that Yes, for decided. really technical goals, you usually have consensus. For more policy-related goals, I mean, for example, I tried to drive uh, Deb 14 on the Git layout. 
I think I have a broad consensus around it, but you still have a few people who say, well, this is useless, uh, because yes, what matters is workflow, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, if they're only concerned, cons uh, concern is still, about still uselessness, I think it's okay. -ish. Yeah, <laughs> but still it would be nice to be able to, I, I mean, as a debt driver, I'm not so confident yet to say, uh, to move it to the accepted state. So yeah. maybe uh, uh, TC could help here. Well, I guess in the, maybe a part of the question is if the technical committee is the kind of court to repeal, then who makes the initial decision? Is that just a kind of consensus of a list, or do we need any? Do we need or not any more formal way to make the initial decision amongst the people who That's are That's why I uh, mentioned the delegation in Chile, yeah. and for me, it makes sense to make the team delegate delegated body. Well, the technical committee has the power to offer advice, and yeah. we could. That's clearly a case where we you could we could just the the, the let me help you team. I uh, could just recommend to the goal owner that he should go to the technical committee and ask for advice about whether it's in an acceptable state or not. I just, I think that if you view the technical committee as a court of appeal and that's how you approach it, you will regret that decision for a very long time. <laughs> wow. I don't think uh, people see it like that, I mean, if I, I just... I they don't. I, I'm just saying let's not start. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Now, for, for, that's why, I mean, uh, I propose to the technical committee to take that in charge because I think they have real value on that and they showed that they know how to discuss with people, reach consensus, etc. But, yeah. yeah. There's still one global thing I think we should keep in mind is that it's quite unusual for the project to rely on having someone external say, this is the good thing, you should do it. And having the technical committee vouch for all the, uh, the things that are on the roadmap kind of changes this to, if I want to do something in Debian, I need to have someone say it is okay. And that's where I would much, much more like something where a team of motivated people prepare an initial roadmap-ish that is good enough, and then for things that mm, that are controversial, then we should have a wide project-wide discussion anyway. And yeah. if it's still very controversial and very important, then at that point you can have an external body say, "Okay, well, we spent some time thinking about it, and it's important enough so that we rule that it is on the roadmap." Yeah. But, but being yeah, having I'm having sure the TC agreement on all the roadmap items as default sounds kind of scary to me. Yeah. In a nutshell, before uh, finishing, uh, if you have a, uh, a deep disagreement on some goals, so obviously it's not a project goal. So there is no doubt that uh, that uh, item shouldn't be part of the roadmap yet until some consensus is reached. So it's up to anyone to comment on the ideas and see, uh, say why it's important or why we shouldn't be doing it. Uh, so I think we are running out of time. <laughs> uh, it's midday. Um, so the other section uh, was about proposing ideas for the roadmap. You can do it later in the Gobi document. Um, yeah. Are there was questions? Okay, anyway, we're running out of time. Hey. So thanks for being here. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Uh, there will be some announcements soon, I guess. Um, yeah, but see you soon. <laughs>